last Sunday I was teaching you about how faith works. And I said faith works through love. Three things that must abide. Your faith, your love, your hope, and your love. If these three things fail, you are a failure in life. Faith is how you start. Maybe a vision, a business, a job, or whatever. Hope is how you travel through that. Hope is what gets you going. It's what keeps you going. But love is what gets everything to you. Love is what gets everything to you. What that means is that your love life deals with your relationship. If you have faith, no matter the faith you are confessing in this world, if your love life is in shambles, you will never go anywhere. If your relationship life is in shambles, you won't go anywhere. You'll be halted in life. Be wise when you deal with, lead, with mentors. Be wise when you deal with people above you. Be wise when you relate to people horizontal. Be wise when you deal with people under you. Because you need that cross to cross. That's why it's called cross. You will never be able to cross from point A of your life to point B if you deal with the cross. If you mess up the cross. The cross is not just where Jesus died. The cross is where he restored relationship. The cross is not just where he hung to be crucified. The cross is where he amended relationship. Where he restored love back. On both ends, vertical and horizontal. Hey, Kamuz Yatahando Koprete Tesh Zazu Prahando Keadahada. Okay. <laughs> Let me show you how the cross is. It's not just a place of crucifixion or no, where they died to. That thing Jesus did there is restoration of relationship. See cross here. Is this not cross? I think this is cross. This is where the man died. What did he die? Part of what he died to do is to restore relationship. And there are four sides of the cross. Hmm? This side is called the horizontal. This is the horizontal. This side is called the vertical. Is that okay? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Mm. 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 The horizontal or the vertical has what you call the upper. Upper vertical. There are two kinds of people who are in this area of your life. If you want to go for know how to deal with them. Number one is God. He's up there. You must know how to have a powerful relationship with him. If you want to succeed, Jesus grew in favor with God and man. So there's God here first. When you hear grew in favor with God, it's talking about growing in relationship in your prayer life, in your worship life, in your giving life, in spending time with him, in your acknowledging him, in your honoring him. This is it. He's up. But now, still on this vertical, you have man. You, if you are a wise man in dealing in relationship and dealing with people, you must know the people who are up here. You can't treat everybody like they are here. You can't treat everybody like they are here. There are people who must be here in your life. One of the person is your pastor. There are people I see in church who cannot relate with. That's why there's no man who has not successfully related with this man who can successfully re relate with God. People say, it's only God that I know. It's a lie. You cannot serve God effectively until you serve man effectively. You can't honor God effectively until you honor man effectively. You can't submit under God until you submit under man effectively. I'm not here to talk about submission and all that, authority and all that, but I'm teaching you relationship with man. You must know the men God put above you. One of them, your pastor. If he's in an office setting, your boss. Maybe you work in a civil service in the parasita in the ministry. It could be your commissioner. It could be your pamsek. Is everywhere. Maybe you work in the bank. It could be your manager. Maybe you work in the university. It could be your vice chancellor. There are people who are at your upper vertical. You must have wisdom on how to deal with them. One of the laws that gets you have favor with man is gratitude, is humility, is obedience. You work in a company. You want to get promotion quickly. It is not even your CV that will do it faster. It's your attitude. You're working in a company. You don't know how to thank your boss for giving you the honor to serve. Just few words. Boss, thank you, sir. You know, ever since I came to this company, I have learned so much under you. Even if it's a wicked man. 
He can be firing orders and be favoring you. Thank you, sir. The things you are teaching me, do you know people, some people may be complaining about you, but I have learned a lot under you. Thank you for being like a father. Because it's only a father that corrects the way you correct. Thank you, sir. I don't know how to thank you, but you see, out of my salary, though it's small, but I said this month cannot pass until I give you a bottle of wine. So I got you this bottle of wine. Thank you, sir. As small as wine is, if you see how your promotion will come fast. Maybe it's with your pastor. He is teaching, he's laboring in your life. You don't know how to catch the man. Thank you, pastor. Where would I have been without these teachings? What would have become of my life without your prayers and your labor in my life, without your effort? Thank you, sir. This month, I said, let me come and give you this money. It's, it's just nothing. It's just an honor. Thank you, sir. I know you do a lot of research. You use phone. It's data you are born in. You make calls. You, I see the way you call people and all that. This is airtime. Thank you, sir. I want to recharge with this. Thank you, sir. I don't know how you do it, but every time you're on program training, you're traveling, you're moving from here and there. Please, sir, it's not too much. It's just a gallon of fuel for your car. As small as that is, it has both a spiritual blessing implication and it also has a fiscal favor implication. You're going to be the one on the favor list of that man. He wants to praise you, he's mentioning. Opportunity comes where the man can recommend somebody to a big man or whatever. It's you that comes to his mind. A fool enters a man's life at that level and doesn't have wisdom. Let me teach you one secret. If you want to survive, never fight your boss. If you want to go far, whether it's in your company, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in any sector you work, if you are under somebody, never, never do it. You're destroying favor with man. Then never fight God. You're destroying favor with God.